hard to believe that winter's behind us. It wasn't so bad, it went by pretty quick. And I can't stand that. I hate this time of year, I can't wait for it to be over and we have a long way to go until spring. We have a long way to go until spring. But today's the day. All week long, we've been moving species back outside here at Garden State Tortoise to get ready for the full 2024 season. But today, we're bringing out and releasing into our backyard our giant tortoises. Now, there's still some work to be done in here, but I want to give you guys a quick tour of the almost finished giant tortoise pen here at Garden State Tortoise. This is where Mickey, the Aldabra tortoise, our Galapagos tortoises, Jack and Sally, and our radiated tortoises are gonna get to hang out for the entire season. So they will be outdoors from April all the way until Thanksgiving. Thankfully, a South Jersey fall is nice and warm, so the animals don't have to come back inside as early as more northern areas of the mid-Atlantic region. And what I did was I went huge because these are huge tortoises. So the key to keeping them comfortable is to make them look small inside the enclosure. I also went very uneven. No two walls are the same in here because you want it to be interesting for the animals. And by doing these different angled areas and cuts, it creates more visual barriers for the animals because they don't need to see each other all the time. And if they want to get away from each other, they can do that. Giant tortoises do tend to be pretty social, especially Aldabra tortoises, so we're not really dealing with any kind of aggression here. And if you guys have been paying attention to previous videos, these tortoises have all lived together in the past. So here it is. This is a massive pen. I don't even know what the dimensions are of it, but there's a nice low area where on extremely hot days, they can create wallows in the mud because this area actually naturally pools. And that's something that's very important for giant tortoises. Now, Galapagos and Aldabras, they're very dark colored, sometimes solid black, so they heat up fast. And even though they are big, rugged reptiles, they still can overheat. So making sure that they have an area that pools or floods is a nice way to help them recreate what they would do in the wild. And that's exactly what they do. They would look for a low area that pools, and if it doesn't pool already, they'll start shimmying their body into the ground to create a big pond or puddle for themselves. But the key here too, because these tortoises are getting big and are going to get even bigger, it's going to be impossible to lift them at some point, just me and Casey. So we're going to make a stairway here where they can actually go right back up into this little nook that I'm creating and there's going to be some heat lamps. So for the rest of spring, while we have some cool nights and unfavorable days, the tortoises can easily go back in here to warm up whenever they want. We can close them up in there if it's a really bad day. And then of course when the season ends and they unfortunately have to come back inside for winter for a few months, they can let themselves in and we could just lure them instead of having to lift them up. So I've got a couple finishing touches to put on this thing. You guys are going to come along with me for the ride here and then we're going to release these animals into this pen. All right, so what I want to do before I get started with anything that's left to do with the outside portion of this pen, I want to finish the inside. So I'm, all I'm doing is just barricading this little area in. Again, this is for them to come in and warm up when they need to. They can come in here at night. And then uh, once the season ends and they're going to be indoors for the months of winter, I just remove this and then they'll have run of the whole thing again. Um, so that's really it, you know, pretty easy job here. Just gotta make sure that these boards are securely in place so the tortoises can't knock them over. So now I'm installing a little heated area for them. These are two 250 watt brooder lights. So that's going to be 500 watts total on the tortoises. And they'll be turned on periodically when they need them. Cool nights, unfavorable days. If I need to shut this door, once they come in, they can hang out in here and get as warm as they need to until the real excessive heat of summer sets in. Um, probably by late May, early June, these lights probably won't be on at all anymore. Then they'll get turned on again in the fall when the nights are cool, but the days are still favorable. And then eventually the tortoises will come in, barrier gets removed, they'll stay in here for a few months. Um, even as full-size adults, they'll be able to fit through this doorway, which is nice because we need to stop picking them up. Today's gonna be the last day I'd lift her, hopefully. Something that's really important for those of you out there that might be raising giant tortoises, the heat lamp and the distance it is from the shell is very important. Everything happens slow with tortoises and they have a different kind of threshold for pain than we do. So more often than not, if you don't raise the heat lamp as they grow, 
a lot of damage can occur before the tortoise even realizes that something is happening and it should move away from the heat lamp. So right now, these are a safe distance for the height of Mickey's shell. But remember, both Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises have very high arcs to their shell. So these do need to come up at some point, maybe even very soon. I really have to see once the tortoises are in. Next up, got to make a little staircase for the tortoises to be able to get back inside easily. Now, Mickey, probably step right in there, no problem. Uh, the smaller animals are gonna need a little bit of help. This is good, it creates even more uneven terrain for them because it's not just flat where they come from, and that's how they get exercise and build strong muscles, and they have a good stature. So that's what we want them to do, we want them to be able to exercise. Fun fact. Pulling this board back here, I'm using wood from pens that we don't use anymore up against the wood line here. And right here is where I was working initially to start this pen, and I got covered in wonderful poison ivy. I've even got it on my face and neck. Fun stuff. Usually happens once a year. Casey suggested that we do a ramp instead of stairs. And it's looking like that was in fact a better idea. Watch out, Gilly. All right, cool. So now I just gotta tack all this in, reinforce it. We've got our ramp. One last thing to do before we let the tortoises out into this enclosure is we're just gonna start decorating a little bit. We're starting with just two plants, two beautiful majesty palms to kind of give that tropical feel to this. Uh, and then we'll add some things as time goes on. But because Mickey is already such a big size, uh, we needed pretty tall plants because Aldabras and Galapagos tortoises, even ones that are not that big, will mow down anything. So these are pretty strong plants. They won't be able to survive out here year round, but that's fine. We can remove them once the cold weather comes back or starts to come back. Uh, and it's really gonna look cool here in the summer. Okay, like I said, we'll add some other plants later on, but now let's go get these tortoises. She's so dusty. so exciting to get this tortoise back outside for the season especially as she gets bigger and bigger and you know I hope seeing like what we did here gives you guys an idea of the undertaking that an animal like this is you know any turtle or tortoise has some pretty specific requirements and they have to be met but of course when you're dealing with the second largest tortoise species in the world you really have to make accommodations for them both indoors and out and uh, we just love doing this stuff. This is awesome. We can see her clear shot from the house. And what's really cool is we kind of have all of our giants in a row because if you remember, Chief Brody and Ellen, our alligator snapping turtles, live in the Aquascape ecosystem, which is right in front of this pen. So we'll be able to look out and see them sticking their heads up for uh, air in the water. And then just seeing the giants out here roaming around on their pasture and making wallows in the mud. It's, this is where they belong, you know? they they. They're, they're a wild animal at heart, and being able to give them a big natural environment is, is uh, I can't really explain the feeling, you know, it's, it's really, really cool. Really, really cool. So Mickey is out for the 2024 season in her brand new pen, but we've got a couple other tortoises that have to come live in here with her, so I'm gonna go round them up now.
Jack and Sally, the Galapagos tortoises that came from 3J's Tortoise Sanctuary. John Heidecker and Jason Abels, two friends of ours that do amazing work with Galapagos tortoises, gifted us these two beauties when they were just tiny hatchlings in 2021. And they're getting pretty big and they're ready to start uh, occupying the giant tortoise enclosure here at Garden State Tortoise, but they're really dirty. So I'm actually gonna take a, a little um, sponge here and clean them off. Like I said earlier, the key to doing this correctly is making your giant tortoise look small in the giant enclosure. is almost always so much fun because everybody's out it's it's just awesome there's turtles and tortoises moving around all over the place breeding season has started um, so we just did something major for some majorly giant tortoises now we're gonna do something for some really tiny tortoises these guys to be exact Fully grown, this is one of the smallest tortoises out there. This is the Tunisian tortoise, also known as the Tunisian Greek tortoise, Testudo Graeca nabulensis. Now, these guys come from Tunisia, so they tend to come from arid coastal environments. Uh, they do appreciate some humidity, so living here on the coast in South Jersey is great for them, but our weather still does not match theirs that closely. So what I'm doing is I've ordered two brand new cold frames or mini greenhouses that we're gonna install and set up in these two enclosures so that the animals can thermoregulate, especially on those days that are unfavorable. And if there's a really bad string of weather where there's just too many thunderstorms coming or something, I can barricade them to the inside of that greenhouse and they can stay safe, warm, and dry in there if need be. You'd be surprised how these arid dwelling animals still appreciate humidity and rain. And in fact, just because they come from arid or desert-like environments in nature does not mean that they don't need hydration. Remember, that's just an adaptation to the environment, but when rain does come, they seek it out and they drink heavily. Let's see here. I hate when there's no words. <laughs> just pictures. Hey! Give you a screwdriver. Right, so this thing is basically assembled. It's two parts. This is the base, that is the top. The reason I really like this particular cold frame or why I'm really interested in trying it out rather is because of the metal sides that it has. This is gonna add for more heat and a quicker heating up inside it for when the tortoises really are requiring that warmth. Um, what I did do was instead of putting the sheet metal panel in here, I got rid of that one and I just situated a piece of treated lumber there so that I can create an entrance for the tortoises. So let me turn it around and you can see, because if you look around our property, all the different greenhouses and cold frames we use have some kind of modified entrance so that the animals can easily get in them and also out because you have to keep something in mind. Like many places, our summers are absolutely blazing. So you don't want the animals to get stuck inside them. These things can be easily vented. You can lift and prop up the polycarbonate tops, especially on those really hot days. But again, making sure that there's always a way for the tortoises to easily escape it is gonna prevent any overheating in there. So uh, I'm gonna get this in place and then I'm gonna dig out a little bit of it first so that it's nice and situated. You know, installing cold frames in greenhouses 
uh, throughout the year at different times can pose different challenges because once the pens grow in and the edibles and the aesthetically pleasing flowers and grasses and other plants that you might already have in place in an outdoor pen can be disturbed when you do something like this. So early spring is a great time to do that and it's also one of the two times a year that the uh, cold frame is most used and most beneficial because we're gonna get uncertain weather here and there. You know, today is beautiful, it's 75 and sunny. Yesterday was 78 and sunny. Tomorrow is supposed to only be about 62 and overcast with some rain later in the day. So these Tunisian tortoises will be able to use this greenhouse to go right in, stay dry, and a little bit warmer than it is outside. All right, so we've got well-drained ground in here. This is nice sandy soil, which is required by a lot of tortoises, especially ones like those that come from Tunisia. Um, and the base is in, we've got our entrance. I also put a bunch of dead grass and leaves in there as a bedding for them. Nice thick layer, which is important, helps them feel secure, and it's an added layer of insulation. Now I'm gonna put the top on, Let's see how this thing fits. Tortoises are already starting to gather up in here, which is awesome. They just know the places to go. They can sense the heat, they can feel it, and they also know areas where they can bed down. So these things are kind of like an instant fix when you're trying to figure out a way to not have to worry about your tortoises so much. If you live in an area where you might have some uncertain weather, and let's face it, that's just about anywhere in our country and pretty much across the world. Unless you live in the natural habitat of these tortoises, chances are you're gonna have to modify your outdoor enclosures to some degree. Tunisian tortoises are beautiful rare tortoises that are very small and can be very sensitive. So going the extra mile for them and doing something like this really helps not just them, but you as the keeper. This is a cold frame made by a company called Out Sunny. We've used other cold frames by companies like Gardener Supply, and those have worked great. So I'm really, really excited to start using this one and see how it goes. I've got several more to put up. This was a productive day. So many animals outside between the giant tortoises and the tiny tortoises, and I hope you guys can take something away from this.